how to organize your appointments like a pro. When you get out making some calls or seeing people face to face, I think the most important thing is setting the right expectations. A lot of people, when they first start off, want to talk about like the weather, how they are, which is good, but you don't want to drag on too much. I think the most important thing is you want to set is that they have a problem. Regardless if you're selling alarms, digital marketing, solar, real estate, one of the things that you want to transition is what their current situation is right now versus what are the solutions that you're offering. And that middle ground is pretty much the problem. And what I like to do, assess the problem is no one wants to buy a drill. They want to buy the hole, but the drill allows them to enable to get the hole. So you want to talk about basically like costs are rising. A lot of people are looking for a better bang for their buck or people want to be more secure and have a more certainty when it comes to their current situation to the transition they want to make for. One of the most important things that you want to do is set that stage. Now you have seven seconds to get their attention, right? Once you don't get their seven seconds, they will think of something else and they'll wander off. One of the biggest recommendations that I can have is use really good body language and tonality to get their attention because that's what they're going to communicate on and pay attention to. One of the most important things is that you want to always set that you're not going to do something today, which basically means, hey, I usually catch people at a bad time. Let's schedule a better day and time. I can speak to you and whoever makes changes in the home or makes purchases with you, aka spouse, parents, business partner, so on and so forth. You want to make sure that there's other decision makers involved into the purchase as well. You're going to do the introduction, the problem, setting the right stage, which is the expectation that you want to do a better day and time and asking if there's any other decision decision makers just so people are in the same page. And when you do it, you want to ask some questions as well, like how much are they paying? Have they actually looked into the service before? Okay, if they look into that service before, what kept them from moving forward? Or why are they actually still shopping around in the market? The more information you know, the better idea that you have what's going on with the prospect, then you have a better evaluation on how you should go when it comes to your presentation, uh, your meeting, and so on and so forth. Because it's all about setting the right tone and have a better understanding of their situation to transition them to where you want to be, which is basically the sale or basically the close in a sense, right? You want to do is actually put in your calendar right away. Obviously, you want to find out their address, their name, their telephone number, and also email as well. Some of the common things that the people will bring up is like, hey, um, can we do this two months down the line? I got to talk to my partner. Some things that is going to give them friction in order to get you in the meeting. So one of the things I like to do is like, what are usually the better times that you and your spouse or your business partner are usually together? And what day that? is that if you can find it if it's a saturday at 10 a.m or they're nine to fivers and they're usually home at six o'clock you want to find that window where they're usually going to be home because a lot of people think that you only work nine to five some people feel like you only work on monday through friday and don't work on weekends right so it's great way to just ask a certain specific time and day just so you can find that window. When someone says, you know what, I want to do two months down the line, the best way to do this is overcoming it, just being plain and simple and just saying how it is. Let me just give you the information because if the information now doesn't make sense, it doesn't really matter if you're going to look at it two months down the line because if we wait two months down the line and you find out that it doesn't make sense, then we just waited for two months for no reason. Is that pretty much fair? And they're going to be like, yeah, that actually makes sense. So here, let me give you the information. If your situation does get better, then contact me. Then we can go from there on the two month period instead of waiting two months and waiting to get the information to see if it makes sense or not and play this waiting game in a sense, right? You won't say that directly, but that's the message you're going to convey to the person when they say they want to wait. When you book the appointment, you want to put in your calendar to make sure it's organized and making sure that you know like how long your presentations usually last or your meetings usually last right and the great way to stay in momentum and track is to put multiple appointments within that range of location and time let's just say you do phone calls or the best way to do it is like know usually the time it takes to get those phone calls and how long it takes the q a or your presentation right and booking something right away just so you're in that momentum state and putting detailed notes of like who is the person why are they looking at your service and some of the objections that I possibly might have because if you're prepared and could really have an understanding of the situation right ahead then it just sets the tone and puts you in the right mindset let's just say you're doing face-to-face -face interactions right compared to a zoom or a phone call because in zoom and phone calls i like to book it like 10 15 minute increments get some rest do what you got to do, bathroom breaks, so on and so forth. When it comes to in person, I like to also do another like five, 10 minute intervals. If it's in the same neighborhood, same office, uh, same zip code in a sense, right? I don't want to book it where I have to drive 30 minutes out, an hour out, unless 
that's only the time they are available. The thing that you want to prevent to do is actually wasting your time because half the people are going to show up and half the people are not going to show up. Half the people are going to do it and half the people are going to do it. It's just how simple the numbers are when it comes to the people business. It's very important if you're going to obviously book a consultation is book as many as possible where you just most drive 10, 15 minutes away and measure that time, right? Because you always want to stay in a constant flow and momentum. Momentum is the biggest thing when it comes to your sales is to be in that constant flow estate and making sure your calendar is organized. Obviously, you have the paperwork, detail notes on that as well, just so you know what the objection is. And you want to get a familiarity on the neighborhood based on the first consultation, the second consultation, if it's in the same neighborhood zip code. And you get a better understanding of the market as you book these appointments, have a direction on where you wanna go. Because the objections that you're pretty much gonna face are pretty much the same, 80-20 rule. Pretty much 80% of the objections are gonna be pretty much the same, and the 20% of them are gonna be a little bit off or very specific to their situation. So I always recommend people right to master the pitch go a to z all the time and when you set the appointments right you don't want to really overcome the objections uh in a sense when you are attempting to book it what you really want to do is use those objections as a reason to divert back on why you want to set an appointment and a time to meet them and set the stage that hey those are great questions and great concerns that you're bringing i can go in more detail on from start to finish on what that'll look like on an order sequence so you have a better understanding because right now i'm just going b k a q i just want to go in order and take those questions in so i can have better understanding and assessment on your situation. And that's the reason why I want to book this consultation and meet you at a better time and go over those other questions that you might have as well, right? So it sets a stage right away. When you overcome the objection on the spot, people will say, you know what, what's the price of this? Because now they're trying to like get a better understanding of the value and dollar all assessed right in front of you because you're giving too much information. You don't have to tell them everything or give them all the info at once. Really what you want to do is set the right stage and expectation it's showtime then when you obviously meet the people right some of the times they want to move right away and some of the people just want to think it over when it comes to the objection of think about it which is probably the common one that you'll get when you first start off because your a to z sequence won't be smooth what i mean a to z is your beginning to the presentation to all the way to the finish line how you end your presentation especially if you're new or haven't done sales what they're going to do or if you're not so good at understanding or presenting they're going to say the dollar does not match the value what he's trying to present i like to do when you first start off is you're going to definitely have more questions and my job is making sure that if you did do this that you are certain moving forward so what we can do is how many days would you need and they'll let you like uh, probably a week or four days okay you know what what we can do is book a second call a second appointment because you're gonna definitely have more questions and what we can do is get those questions answered and see if you are not wanting to move forward or wanting to move forward and we can assess your options and review this back if you're in the face-to-face -face business this is a great way to do it when it comes to the phone calls zoom what you want to do is get a little deposit a good faith so they, they actually can come back maybe like a fifty dollar hundred dollar deposit uh, in order to reserve their spot just because there's limited spots on how many clients you can take and orders that you can fulfill when it comes to your business right so it sets the right stage obviously they are committed halfway through and you can just get a better understanding of what some things want uh, when the husband and spouse or the person and the business partner are talking amongst each other while you're not there. I like to give them people to actually think or research if that's what they bring up and keep on looping back. Because some people do need to actually need some time, especially if you're not point of authority or someone who is relatively new. And when they say they'll get back to you, you want to say, hey, my time is very limited. Do three to four consultation appointments like this a day. What it does is it helps my schedule if I actually put this in my calendar. You guys won't mind if a tentative appointment where we set that and just so it helps my calendar and we make our time effective is that fair enough and when you set that kind of a stage because ultimately you always want to stay in control whoever asks the most questions or stay in control wins that part right but you're not going to close everyone i want people to understand like if you speak to five people and one of them close that is an industry standard now if you speak to three people and one of them close pretty much a superstar now if you're that type of person who closes one out of two then you're just a mega star right to be completely honest the game of sales has always been a numbers game and you can't close everyone but what you want to do is get a better assessment 
from these second visits. Find out what the real objection is because they're going to share it with you. Let's just say they got the time. They can't say they got to think about it again when they do meet you again. I would highly advise for people to learn the basics of, you know, not selling the product, but selling the appointment. And when you do uh, meet them, willing to walk away from the presentation and let them think about it if that's the objection or research if that's what they bring up, right? Take advantage of the second visit so you have a better understanding. Okay, is it truly time or was it just because how the industry works or they get bombarded by other things or they're shopping around? And when you get to the second visit, find out what the true objection is or some other questions that they didn't brought up in the first visit that you were able to overcome and address so they feel much more comfortable moving forward. Fifth one will be my recommendation is find out the numbers. How many people do you need to talk in order to get an appointment? How many of these appointments that you actually see end up being a close? How many of them actually need a second visit or a follow-up appointment in order for them to move forward, right? And if you guys can figure out those numbers, now it's just all about putting work on those numbers. Staying organized, uh, finding the objections, reviewing the meetings, and becoming a true professional doing that. I think this will increase not only your odds, but also increase on how you should run your business as well in a more effective way. That's my advice to you. Hope it helps. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.